Bones. Action. We need to kill it. Ow. No, nothing can survive a gun. Let's do that. <laughs> I'm gonna crack um, out my text line. I just want to get a reference of what I'm basically talking nothing about. Nothing can survive a gun. Nothing can survive a gun. But guns are dangerous. And Actors take your mark. This one's gonna be it. This one's gonna be it. Yeah, I no, it's not gonna be it. Shut you up. It. Sorry. Actors take your mark. <laughs> Actually on. Action. <laughs> Action. So what'd you find? I've barely found anything. Uh, I found this book. It's about a demon who hunts sleeping people. In different cultures, they call it like different things. You're supposed to cut me off. Set and action. So what's the plan? Okay, can we redo that? Did you see that? <laughs> what? I I had the I had it on my report and I didn't. Did. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Uh, what? Have, what have they done? Don't make what, me laugh. What drugs have they taken? None. Are you recording right now? Yeah. Help me. Put this in the blooper reel. Help me. These idiots are gonna give me a heat stroke. Please. Mom, stop. Yeah. So uh, Owen was a fool and left me in control of the camera here. Now I can film whatever I want. Have the dolly. We can practice that. Let me guess, Owen. You're awake at uh, editing this at let's say 12, 12 a.m. That sounds about right for you. Anything to say while Owen isn't here? It isn't really a dream, it feels real. Yeah. Oh, you know, we should but have one of those. We should have the blooper reel. Oh, you should remember this. Okay. So, due to peer pressure, um, I'm doing this again making another video about how I made a film. So, here that is. Let's get started. If you want to get into the in-depth analysis and how I made the rest of this movie, skip to chapter two. But for now, we're going to learn the story of how I came up with this particular film idea. Our story begins when I was in the middle of production on my last film, an adaptation of Lord of the Flies. Everybody asked on that film for a blooper reel I neglected to make one, and so now, for warnings of a dormant mind, I have to. So, I mean, I don't have to, but I just, I did. Here. Anyway, so, the story starts when I was at Boy Scout camp over the summer, and the conversation during that night drifted towards, um, dreams. One of the kids there started to explain in a, in a rather scared way about these, this horrifying dream that he'd been having, like sleep paralysis, where there, there was this, this monster in the corner of his bedroom that went up and, and like strangled him. And the way he described this was very fascinating. It was like terrifying. And so I, I was like, all right, all right, well, well, surely someone has made a film about this before. I mean, it, it, it seems a prime thing for horror films. So I did research when I got home, and uh, I mean, there had been some films inspired by it, but I, I couldn't really find a film that I wanted about this particular subject. And so... I decided to make it. I started writing this in August, and that led into a while, and so I finished the script in November, early November. And then the challenge of casting. So I had been telling 
my friend Charlie about this, and he, he was obviously going to play the main character, because he was the most motivated person, uh, actor I had at the time. And uh, then he invited Cal to come and uh, act, because Cal apparently, according to Charlie, said that he wanted to act. So I got Cal to play the role of Matthew, which worked. And uh, I'm very glad about that because Cal is a particularly excellent actor. Rather good find. Hmm. All right. Next. All right. So after that, let's get into the actual film. This this is not great. Look at this. The the light level has just yeah disappeared. All right, I can fix it. Watch it. No, 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 no. No, I go. Cal goes. Babe, what's wrong? And I go. Because we're turning on the lights to talk. Because what? it's no, the sun's back. Go, go, oh, go, go, go. Okay. All right. Action. First day we filmed was November twentieth, and uh, this was the day when we just. This is the day when we started filming, and uh, we filmed three scenes that day. And this day was rather difficult because we started filming, and you know nobody had memorized their lines, and nobody knew really what they were doing because this was like the first day, and so all of the actors were first and second time actors. So none of these people were really, you know, experienced actors. So. Uh, it took a while to get all of the shots done this day, and we only filmed a grand total of three scenes in three hours. So it was really unproductive in uh, that. We took a relatively long break uh, for Thanksgiving and came back on December 3rd um, and started filming again. This time, uh, Charlie and Charlie's dad had... Uh, constructed a dolly so that I, that um, so that I can create smooth moving cameras throughout this film we started getting different shots of different areas and uh, getting all the movement you can tell when it was December 3rd that most of the moving shots are from December 3rd because I uh, that was when I got the dolly and just couldn't stop using it is that enough time? Like walking around? Yeah, that's perfect. All right. All right. And action. You didn't tell me you had a fucking gun. Yeah, it used to be my dad's. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck I said that. I literally, I literally go, damn. Okay. Like out of habit. <laughs> uh, December fourth was the same thing, and we had the, uh, the the dolly again, but this time I did I didn't find myself using it as much again because I'm trying to match these the '60s style, and most films in the '60s didn't have much movement. We came back the next weekend. We filmed some more, and uh, on December eleventh. This was relatively difficult because uh, I had set the release date on Christmas, which was, in hindsight, a bad idea. So we had to really push to finish this film on time because we were so far behind. And uh, my producer, Max, ha had to schedule in different times during the week and after school rather than just doing it over over the weekend and we were filming until like eight o'clock at night and you know that that was difficult one day on the 14th um that was that was one of the most difficult days because we only had charlie that day and cal came for like 30 minutes but he uh he, he decided to skip church, which turned into a whole thing. And uh, we had to, you know, just film with Charlie the entire day. So that all the, we got all the, um, the shots done. Finn, 
Yamini, who was on, who worked with me on previous movies, decided to come up this day and help with the uh, the shoot. And so we did we did get a lot of work done, but you know, in the script I had wrote many scenes where uh, Charlie was crying, and um, so the the first day I asked Charlie if he could cry in command, and he he couldn't. So he watched a couple YouTube videos on how to cry in command, and still couldn't. So my producer decided to go and purchase um, some cry sticks that he found online, which I still think are the stupidest things in the world. They didn't even work, and they, the, the cry stick, th- it just, like, stung people's eyes, but whatever. Anywho, so in the process of this, Max, the producer, uh, you know, decided to, you know, every day after... He just decided to keep using this cry stick on himself and other people. Alright, alright. Alright, do you have a squeeze bottle of water? It's just going to have, huh? <laughs> it's just... It's... It's so stupid. It's... It's... He describes it as a minty, like, feeling on the eyes. Our, Charlie said he went blind for, like, a minute. I... It's... I didn't... I don't think this was necessary. Especially for the crying scene. We needed... Um, I, we eventually just, because the tears weren't being created, we eventually just poured water in his eyes. So c- clearly this, this cry stick did not result in um, accurate or useful things. It only uh, caused more chaos when we had to have two different people crying at, crying at the same time, having to solve their, their problems there. It was, it's just, it was chaos. Okay, so now I'm going to analyze my favorite scene in the film. Okay, so this is a dream sequence, and uh, what's happening basically in this is uh, uh, what's happening in Charlie's mind. Now, uh, this, this, these, these shots, as you can see, um, they're they're on the beach, and uh, the way that I photograph this whole film is I. I I use this this old style of of filmmaking here. I barely use the cam- moved the camera. Um, the camera's very still, and uh, throughout the film, like an old '60s film would be, um, I, I added a lot of like um, aberrations and grain to uh, the the digital image to make it look like it was uh, shot on '60s film. And I used uh, vintage lenses to really push the aesthetic of that further. I'm using this old technique where they that they used to do in films, where they uh, would under crank the camera, and I'm um, using it for um, specific uh, dream sequences. Um, but the under cranking of the camera would uh, create this like uh, this jittery effect, and um, as you can see in like the waves here, it's creating this like shuddery effect. That's um, that's because I'm under cranking it, and and also I'm shooting this on a wide angle lens, and you can see how like all the lines of the the sand are like leading this to the center of the frame here, um, to look at Charlie, and Charlie's moving in in this this shuddering way because of the uh, the uh, the way this is, and. All over top of this, I've over- overlaid breathing, and the breathing is actually a reference to 2001: Space Odyssey. Um, the breathing in that uh, that particular film, when they're out in the uh, when they're out spacewalking, has this deep exhale where it's like, <sighs> and it's like this 
this really interesting and unsettling breathing that um, Stanley Kubrick used, and I decided to lift that and use it for this. Um, right now, I'm just shooting it, and uh, we shot this actually um, like around uh, right at dusk, so the sun is setting. Um, but it's hard to tell because I'm shooting at this such a slow shutter speed, which means it's going to be brighter than it actually is. Um, so yeah, and he's seeing something here. Now this shot here. This shot is, um, is a low shot, but it's not... It's kind of... It's a little bit weird here because I'm center framing it as if it's a... As if it's... Um, a POV from Charlie, but Cal is looking above the camera, which means it's already unsettling. Um, and that makes it just look strange, because he's looking above where he's supposed to be looking, and it's, it's, it's odd. And then he starts to smile. This time we cut. Um, and to this wider shot, um, but this shot uh, is gonna is gonna change, and so he smiles, and of course this isn't the real you know Matthew. It's it's dream Matthew that may or may not be a part of the monster. We don't really know, but right here, and then he falls. Same thing with Charlie. Then we cut to this shot, which I think is rather nice. Um, and it's like this, uh, this, um, this lovely beach look to it, and uh, then it, then, then Matthew falls into the frame, and you know nobody's actually seeming like they're worried. I told them not to to act like, like, the, like um, you know, super afraid by this, but they're they're fine, and uh, he actually starts smiling by the end of the shot. Um, but they're, they're, they're lying in the sand, and this is all a metaphor, and then we cut to the, uh, the final shot as he breathes out one last time, and we see um, the, uh, the monster, the demon, um, standing off in the distance, which is actually Issa, and then we cut. So that's that. That's the scene. All right, so for the music in this film, I just basically did what I usually do for every movie. It's a combination of arpeggiated piano and synth, but the main theme is basically just these notes. And these notes are repeated and combined with synth to create this. <laughs> 